You can take over. Okay, we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Uh, Ashley, could you call the roll? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Oscar Robinson. Mike Davidson. Here. Tom Dewitt. Here. Steve Davis. Here. Preston Elkin. Okay. We do have a quorum. Chris, do we get anybody attending from Zoom? Not yet. Okay. Um, the minutes from the previous meeting have been published, so we don't need to read them. Uh, if there's no corrections, do we have a motion to approve these minutes? Second. Second. Okay. Minutes from July 2nd have been approved. The agenda is published in advance. Could we have a motion to adopt this agenda? Um, Second. Okay. Mr. Vice Chair, if I could make a request that we move Oscar Robinson's items to the end of the agenda. That's a great idea. To give him time if he is able to be in attendance. Absolutely. Okay. With that uh, amendment, the those have been approved. The agenda has been approved. We'll discuss items specifically on the agenda. <clears throat> With uh, three exceptions, the members, staff, and public will have the opportunity to comment. Uh, first item is from Oscar about what is expected from this committee, and we'll move that down. And uh, are you thinking also the swimming pool? Because he is the one that brought that up. I, I think it'd probably be better to just wait okay. and see. And then if he doesn't attend, then we can follow up with the information we have on that. Project. Okay. That sounds good. Uh, man, this may be a quick meeting. Uh, Preston had brought up 250 acres next to the softball complex. Um, is there any conversation on that that needs to be had. I mean, I we had spoke at the last meeting about how he had ideas to put in soccer fields and football fields in that area that's closer to reuse that's ready and um, potential of lights being donated uh, by the electric co-op um, at this time, other than looking for grants and things there's not really any other direction that staff can go until a decision's made by this committee and council uh could i ask joe a question and this may not be your deal but didn't we get some kind of grant that due to the handicap accessibility was going to put lights in the parks so we didn't get one like that but um we do have a, a quality of life grant that we did get and part of that, we are going to put some lights into some of the parks. Um, rotary and the walking trail, those are some pretty big ones because there's not a lot of light out at the walking trail. Um, I hadn't planned on, we hadn't planned on putting any out at the softball complex okay. as of right now. Okay. Yeah, and I thought it was tied to the dog park funding. or something. That is the same grant. Okay, all right. <clears throat> My only comment about the softball complex is that we're missing the boat uh, as there's not a lot of things in Portales that attract people from outside Portales to come here uh, as far as activities. Uh, that, that venue out there could be made to be nice uh, and pull people in to have tournaments, things like that, fill up the restaurants, fill up the hotels. And uh, and I also think it needs to be handicap accessible. That's, that's something real important. And we have the capacity to make it very nice with 11 million gallons sitting 200 uh, feet away. So that would be the only input that I have. Are they watering that right now? Yes. Morning, Oscar. Morning. 
you could correct the deal for Oscar showing up, and you can take over if you want. We we paused your two items that you got here. I, <coughs> I was at the wrong building again. I keep I have to learn that this is the building for the Public Works Committee. So used to being over there. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair. Discussion items. Did you, did you call A? A and B. Both. Okay. A, A. Excuse my voice, but it's a little oh. bit. Uh, I can't get rid of this thing, whatever it is. Well, one of the roles of expectation of the committee, the reason I brought this up to Ashley and to the manager, is I think that first first expectation for the chair to know where the meetings to be held in the time. And <laughs> I've been reading, uh, I guess we miss for being sick or whatever, God, nature, act. Not allow me to attend all of the meetings that I should have attended, but I still think the expectation for this committee is to is to listen to the voice of the uh, departments, and if the, if anyone on the committee have a role, they uh, question they could ask the question of those presenters when they come. And I guess one of the things that's been kind of bothering me is the fact that what do we expect from the employees of the city? If if I have some concerns, such as swimming pool, I should go to the city manager first, say, here's my concerns. And the city manager listen to those concerns, then he or she uh, make the determination which department will respond to that uh, thing. I don't think that we as members of a committee should not take bring anything to the committee up front and say, I want this done, I want this part of it done, or that part of it done, or the alley wasn't clean. If you had that concern, you probably should have ran that by the uh, city manager. At least I will. I will run all of my concerns by the city manager first. Hopefully, the city manager will give me an answer. And if you don't, he will have somebody uh, at the uh, look into it. And if it's not answered, then I would ask that for the worst committee meeting, how come that wasn't taken care of? So I think that is the way we should look at it, the way we address our uh, city employees because I feel like they overwork underpaid and they have a lot of emergencies coming up and they don't know which they're going to be. Or, uh, we don't have to worry about uh, Mendoza and his crew, uh, Steve and his crew, and we think that they're doing a pretty good job. We, I do, and I think that they try to answer as many of the emergencies as possible. Now, if I notice we have passed items on the agenda that require uh, a lot of in-depth research. I don't think that as a committee member, I should, other than a New Mexico law, we do have a New Mexico law, a HIPAA uh, our request. You can, any citizen of the state can request a public uh, response to something that that impacts them or the city, and they need some information from the city. But that's a 14-day or 15-day request. And, if, and the state law says that uh, pub, on the public records that the public is supposed to respond to the citizen. But they have 14, the, the organization that have to provide that information have 15 days to give that information to. So we come to a meeting in a two week time or one week time, that don't even give them enough chance to respond to the public request. And the public request should be in right to that person <laughs> other than your direct responsibility to talking to the city manager. 
I I don't think I should myself as a chair of this committee should go to any department media and ask them for a report. I think I should go protocol to the city manager and say, I have a concern. Could you give me a record report? For example, I made a comment uh, at city council meeting about my disappointment that we didn't have a swimming pool open this year. Uh, and the, the response I received, I didn't accept it. But the point is, the swimming pool is not open. I also in that city council meeting indicated that I know people was going to move to close because we didn't have a swimming pool. But their report came back from the city manager, but he investigated it. And now we have an idea of what we can do with a swimming pool. So I just think that we uh, should take our role as a committee member of the Public Works Committee is to work directly through the city manager <clears throat> and get information from him and let him provide the right information, all the backup information that we need before we proceed it, put it on the agenda of the Public Works Committee. And that was my concerns, and I've been like this for for a hundred years, and I'm only 83. But uh, I think that we need to slow down on our efforts and put efforts on the, on the city employees. And I think our role of this committee is to work directly to the city manager, and he will work directly to the department, and so forth. And another reason for that <laughs> is because under New Mexico law, that personnel opinion, a privilege. <laughs> and some of these things we'd be asking could be a uh, value uh, in, uh, information from the city manager to the employee. You're not doing your job. We don't, we're not privileged to that discussion. So we shouldn't really say what we think sh they should do because we put an evaluation expectation on the department. And I think the only person who's allowed to do that in, in our city is the city manager. <clears throat> we as council members or committee members can evaluate the, uh, make recommendations to evaluate the city manager, but we should not be making uh, evaluation statements to, to the employees. Or uh, even putting them in a situation where they, they're gonna fail because they didn't give you a report. So that's the reason why I'm concerned and brought this to the table today. You can have your input on any way thing I said. Okay. I'll go. Well, I'll go after you. Uh, the one, the first thing I want to ask you is, is this a precautionary statement or is there a specific problem where that is happening? That's it's more so precautionary and a specific. I don't have any direct uh, information, but uh, it is more of a cautionary. Okay. And because I think that sometimes we uh, act, I'm evaluating it. I think that uh, I may sometimes step over my bounds of the chair. And I think that the committee should call me down. And, and, and then I think I should come to uh, When a committee person said, I am. Uh, on the public works committee, and I like to have this information. I think that this information should have either been placed in writing the HIPAA request or either straight to the city manager. And I don't think that we as a committee member have that opportunity to make a request from public service without either putting it in writing or going to the city manager. So that is an expectation. Okay. Um. <clears throat> We, we've had a part of a discussion before about the definition of public works. And to me, it is working for the public. We're the bridge between the public and the city. And we're in a city that has uh, trash issues, wage issues, uh, retention issues, road issues pool issues, water issues, senior citizen issues. So personally, I, I don't mean any disrespect, but I'm not interested in doing it the way it's been done before because it hasn't worked. And now respecting the chief or whoever is uh, 
city manager 100% agree with. There is a chain of command in this town and, and doing things without the city manager's knowledge is something that needs to be considered. And putting a burden on any employee above what we've already taxed them with is also a strong consideration. I know that we ask more of our city employees than anybody should ever ask of an employee. And they give no flack. They come through every single time. And uh, so I, I do agree with you about going over anybody's head. That's why I ask if this is something that happened or are you just warning us or because I don't know. I may have done that. I don't know uh, of any specific incidents that have caused trouble. I, I, I'm, I think it was really important things in the man. I think that sometimes I, I, I sit here thinking that we sometimes think because you're on the committee, all the things you said are right. However, <laughs> all of those are public requests. And they, there is a, in New Mexico is an open meeting state and they all public requests according to we follow the law should go according to all. Otherwise, we don't have that employee has no due process. And so if we feel like the streets need to be swept, the potholes need to be fixed, we need to take that concern to the city manager. And the city manager will report. But New Mexico is very uh, guarded in protecting the rights of citizens. And the employees are citizens. And and, and the personal opinion, and personal opinions are privileged. And so I think that that's why I brought this up. Okay. The, the, the other thing, too, is <clears throat> I don't see any employee in this room that hasn't, and this is me personally, that hasn't reached out to me and said, hey, if I can help you with anything, please let me know. Email me, call me, whatever. So to me, that sounds like an invitation to, to try to solve problems. But I totally agree with you that anything that we can keep off of these people's backs, we should. So that's 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 my point. Oh, and I and I and I'm not just to me, an 83 year old fool making a comment that I'm willing to stand by. And the reason I'm saying this is because we sometimes forget what the serve what the like you said, what is the role of the public when it's provide service. But those folks that provide the service for this uh, for the citizen uh, have some. We have to respect their roles too. And I think that the way they provide that, it how they can provide and do a better service, like you said, they can come here, that's up to them. However, uh, when it, when the demand is that I need this report, I need this report or that report uh, by a certain, certain date, that should not come from this committee. It should come to the city manager. That's what I'm concerned about. So would it be feasible that if somebody makes a request that puts a public employee in a find or a spot that they could also go to the city manager and say, hey, this is this is giving me trouble. Okay. And, and the city manager can, can because there's nobody <laughs> here against enemies. Everybody here is trying to work for the same cause. So equally they could have a representative in the city manager that says, hey, you know, we we ought to do this officially or by the book instead of calling up or emailing somebody to give you some report. And, the, and that's, those are well thought statements. I have a, I've sit on a committee, a state committee, and every, every meeting, the public had a request and we always spent our time on was addressing the public request. And, and the state law give us so much time to do that. That's all I'm saying. We, there is a rule. We don't, this committee is governed by open meeting act, and I think we need to stay, abide by it. And that's that's my point. And the rule of expectation of the committee is to abide by the state law. Well, I definitely don't want the last word, but I got one more word. Who are you? 
<laughs> is uh, to me, if anybody is in here overtaxed and overworked, it's the chief as being the city manager. The first person I would want to keep things off of their shoulder would be his. But, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know. It, I, I, it, I disagree with that. That okay. he needs to be overtaxed and overworked. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can confirm that I am overtaxed. Overtaxed <laughs> at, <laughs> at the very <laughs> least. But, he's but he didn't say overwork. He did just say overwork. I think he did. Y'all didn't hear him. He was I, can run, I can run this discussion. Only, I guess the bit, bottom line I'm saying is let's let's stay within the bounds of the law of the state. <laughs> Open meeting that in personal opinions. And they, and they, and they uh, pointed out in the Constitution very well. Well, the part that I forgot. I, uh, one more time at the last word here on me is the only thing I've heard from the employees that is giving them fits is from somehow this IPRA frenzy that started say a year ago is that that has been giving them more fits than anything is because they're always collecting data for IPRA requests. Yeah. And now we got a, a, an official call to do IPA request, and at any rate, that's, I see your points. Okay, and, I, and the United States is a country of law, and we are run by lawyers. And I do know in New Mexico, if we don't follow state law, that put the city at, at liberty, I mean, and make the city liable. And I think that we need to stay within the bounds of the law. And if it put too much burden, matter of fact, if if a citizen go to the, <laughs> to the chair to the city manager and ask a, a, a request of a water department or street department, he can refuse. He has option under state law to either respond in fifteen days or respond at that point and say we will we will get back to you within the fourth night. They, so it's not a dead, dead, dead deal. I can get back to you maybe next year. So that is the that is the voice of the state law. If you read the law, they, they, there's a leeway for this manager, but only the manager can do that. And 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 if he does do that, then that's what we have to abide by. But he will let us know. Hey, I had a hip request that required. Oscar Robinson get his eyes clean. Uh, or somebody didn't clean his eyes. Now that is not a hip request. That is a direct request from a citizen to the city manager. So I think you just have to follow the law and we'd be okay. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with 100% with, you know, I'm going to support the law. That's First and foremost, everything should be framed around that. Second, I looked up the mission statement for public works because okay. into this about three months, I was really confused on what we do here and what we don't do, what we achieve. I didn't find anything. Um, I did I find what you said. I said I didn't find anything. Huh. I did find one for close. Their mission statement says, advise and assist the city council in the development and application of policies, programs relating to sanitary sewer, wastewater, streets, so on and so forth. I think that's what we should be doing. And I think that's what that statement is. And well, I, I, don't I didn't it. see that, didn't see but that. I, did, I did ask the mayor and the mayor agreed 100% with that statement. Right. And I think we should adopt in whatever wording in a mission statement for public works, something similar to that. <laughs> That's a good point. Maybe uh, when I talked to Chief and the city manager, he said that he couldn't find, whatever, am I right about that? About the ordinance. ordinance. We couldn't find the ordinance. But if this is a model, then I guess we ought to utilize it. <laughs> we know, should bring it up, uh, maybe to, right? That's a good idea. And I think we, I think we need an outline. A yeah, we do. I mean, because I stepped in here not knowing yeah, anything what, about the procedure or or what are what we're trying to achieve. Because 
it seemed like we hadn't got anything achieved. We'd, we'd talk about a subject and that subject would die. And, and we wouldn't go back to it. And it, it felt like we didn't, you know, it's a problem that the people, the citizens have, we'd talk about it and then it would vaporize. Yeah. We wouldn't come back to it. Okay. Honestly, honestly, the only thing that I've seen moved along since I've been up here is the EPCOR discussion. Uh, that got moved along with a with a positive vote. Other than that, I couldn't tell you how many votes we've had up here. And speed anything bump. that we've moved to, no, it never got taken care of, has it, Oscar? Well, speed that, bumps are still on the ground. There's the speed bumps still there, and the speed bump never was moved, and they are still there, and they still narrow. And you're right. But the, those things, but we come back to that. But but we have it. That's we, what I'm saying. No, we're, I said we're not completing these every things. Every time I drive across that speed bump on Globe, I I get mad. I know. <laughs> I know. But, but that, that's a. Uh, but how do we how do we complete that thing? I don't think we need to tell the city that we need a ditch on 18th Street. Uh, I think we can tell them that we need that, but we don't need to tell them which shovel to use to dig it or how to use that shovel. We we you know that's micromanaging in my opinion. Well, uh, but, but then, but see, I think that when you a comp role of a com a era of accomplishment, I see. I think that the street department has been accomplished in a lot of things. We just no, I think they have. I, I was but just you said nothing has been accomplished. And no, 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 I'm saying nothing here. Oh, here, well, nothing we, between us. I I haven't seen things that we've talked about. Come to fruition. I just I haven't I haven't well, I seen think, a lot of them things. Yeah, the street is department is a good example. I see that's coming. That you know they they have a Steve Steve. Don't you have a map showing all of the potholes you fix? We do. And time frames and all Oscar, that. I think you're misunderstanding. He's saying the the topics that we've brought up and we've discussed have not come to fruition. He's not saying that Steve and yeah, them aren't doing anything. We I know they're doing talking uh, about potholes, but he's been doing a good job on it. What I'm saying is we this committee brought up potholes discussion. Okay. And they and and they and they address the potholes. Okay, discussion. I stand corrected so I, then on that. I understand I, I exactly what he was saying. I'm talking about we like have votes and and, and right. stuff moving moving things forward, moving things up to council. Mm -hmm. I've not seen very many things move along. That's why I think we should have a mission statement and uh, and we should we should pretty much abide by that. Right. Kathy, did you manage to you see her that statement that city close your eyes? Is that a, a good model for this committee? Uh, that would be up to the committee's discretion. What do you what the committee think about that? I think we need to I think we need to look at it and Okay. See if it fits us and what doesn't fit us, and we can make adjustments. Can you send that to all of us? Sure. Okay. I, I would say that uh, there have been some things come to fruition. We <clears throat> we brought up the transfer station. Mm -hmm. Steve Chavez told Joe, get on it. <laughs> get going on a grant. Joe got on to a grant, invested work in it. The The state government turned it down. So I, I think we had a role, a, a role in that, and uh, and part part of it was developed through through here. Uh, You're right. A lot of things we have talked about is we we have the authority to talk about them and generate these ideas, but we don't have the authority to carry them through to final city approval. No, absolutely. We, we may have the authority to get them on the council's desk, but uh, that's that's exactly what that mission statement said: to advise and assist the the council to on on programs, policies, and the application of them. So that's exactly what it says: is to advise and assist. I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that we have the authority yeah. to make anything happen. Yeah, um, we barely got the authority to turn that light switch off over there, but. <laughs> but 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 it it has to be moved up. We don't even have authority to raise the temperature of this room. Come on, it's because you're 83. <laughs> but anyone else? No, okay. But that's that was I think the discussion and some of the insight is that public work is a very light and charged committee. And because we this could I, the employees who work in the public worship department, they 
they barring anything, they're involved with safety, health, right, and 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 then uh, quality of life issues. And all three of those are very important. I mean, they don't carry guns, but boy, I hate they have their nighttime fixing leaks and uh, plumbing all over town. We got road closed right now because of some leak leak situation, and I think that's a water department deal. And and and, and but they are working, and so public work is a very valuable part of our community uh, livelihood. Sanitation, like think about San Francisco when the the truck driver said, uh, trash driver said, we're not going to try to tr uh, pick up the trash. Look how he put that city back. So we have to, you know, <laughs> they they control our, our livelihood. So we need to treat that that department very good. <laughs> Every one of them. I think another thing to add to that though is I think our role should be finding out what these guys need. And getting that into open discussion, you know what 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 it what it's going to take to help them do their job better, and then that way we can take that kind of information forward to council, not only to council but the public sees that we're actually working on it, we're talking about it. Well, one of the things that we brought up as this committee, and I believe with Chairman uh, uh, Committee Edmonds and uh, Davidson. Uh, comments that I employees are underpaid. And, and, and so I think this committee role to advise the council is to go to the city council for with the blessing of the city manager, uh, uh, a pay increase for the public employees, for the works employee. I am not talking about city, uh, all city employees. I'm not talking about the clerical staff. I'm not talking about the police or the fire. The chief going to get mad, but I'm no. I, I, mm -hmm. I see where you're coming from. I, I, think I, I agree. I am seeing one. This uh, public works committee. I would love to go to the city council with the support of this committee, asking for a pay increase for the public work uh, overall. And then that's something I'd like to debate at city council meeting. And I think that's one. I think we I, we ought to take there, especially with the budget year coming up. So that's one of the things I like to see this committee recommend to the council it's a pay increase for all public work employees. I hear nobody or <laughs> no 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 we we, no, we, we, we head, head, head not we, head not even a lot of we, we discussed that on April 2nd we discussed raises for for the to the city employees in public works so it has been done once and uh apparently that's where it died Let's bring but, it back then. Yeah, yes, uh, we, we need to. And, and I want to say that we do need to include the fire department. You can't ask somebody, climb up on this burning roof or go in this burning building for 14 bucks an hour. You just can't do it. I mean, we're doing it. but And they're doing it. It, it, it just slaps us in the face. Uh, we, we have to make it more than you'd make it a fast food drive up window you know <laughs> asking somebody to risk their lives for us and if i've fallen and i can't get up i i don't want a beginner standing over me <laughs> i want somebody that has some training and experience so here i you know at any rate but i think <clears throat> what i'm trying to i understand your point about all employees are probably underpaid on work I'm saying that this committee should champion at 100% increases for the public works employees uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 and bring them up. Mm -hmm. Now, the fire department, uh, they got a role model down there, a person who is an advocate to try to bring their salaries up. But I don't hear anyone saying uh, the sanitation worker should get $10 more or a dollar more. No one talked to them. And this is the only committee can speak for them. And that's why I bring this up is that uh, as a public works committee, we ought to get 100% behind the public works employees getting an increase. And then, and I'm sure that the fire, the fire department chief, the chief of the fire department, he's a go-getter. And I'm sure he'll have his employees up there too. But who's the go-getter for the public works department? Nobody. 
And, and I think this committee should be that person. Well, I'm going to beg to differ with you. I've spoken many times publicly about getting city workers raises. Well, so, I'm not talk, I yeah. said the spokesperson for the, the public works employee to say this is the water we need to improve. Mm -hmm. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm yeah, we need I 100% agree here. with you that these people need to be taken care of better. So, so that being said, before this gets pushed out on the back burner and then falls off the back of the stove, can we set a date and time to where we actually have this discussion and and then make something happen? Well, we uh, think that we need to go. Sorry, Chief. Uh, April, well, you said we should take the recommendation of April. April 2nd, we talked the about the finance committee and, and put it and see if we can get it on the finance committee agenda. And, and then, and also we should take it to the city council, not this mm -hmm. meeting. Uh, but the next city council meeting, yes. So department directors are in the process of doing individual salary studies for each position within their departments. Um, the problem we're running into is time and workload for staff to accommodate that, but as well as we've got to get this budget cycle wrapped up and the new one started before we can really start pushing hard on it. Um, but I can't tell you how much it means to me as interim city manager to hear the support from this committee and many others um, for that process. Um, but I would ask for a little patience and time as we develop that and move forward so that we can get some accurate numbers. That way we know exactly what a dollar an hour raise is going to cost for this department and that department so that we can have that firm information to provide to council and to the finance committee. Okay. That's a good recommendation, Chief. What are you saying? We're starting tomorrow uh, with our meetings on salary and pay. Um, okay. Then we're going to continue to work on each individual plan. Then once we get the pay plans figured out, then we can plug in our current employees because okay. it's not right to start a new employee at 20 bucks an hour, okay. but an employee that's been loyal for three years is making 19. Well, we take your recommendation, but I'm just, we're just I'm not going to, I used to do Sarah's study. I know what you're talking about. Yes, sir. We would love to have those recommendations made to this committee so we can 100% support it. Definitely. And we'll definitely take it through each committee for each individual department that is affecting. It's just going to take us a little time to gather the data, me work with the individual department directors to develop their pay plans and improve them to where it is competitive and appropriate. And then we will take it through the individual committees, specifically starting with finance, but we can notify each committee so that they can start supporting as we move through that process. And, and politically, since the government came down and gave us a million, 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 million of dollars. Mm -hmm. Can I get a copy of that check, sir? Yeah, uh, and, and uh, write a blank check for us. I think this is an appropriate time for us to approach this. <laughs> Maybe we can get some of those dollars this year. If there's actually any dollars there, yeah, we need to try to advocate and get every bit we can. So you have a plan. Will you present that to us in two weeks? I, I don't know if it'll be ready in two weeks because we've got to wait for the final budget to be inputted and for Liliana to know exactly where we are and what we have available to support those raises. That part is kind of confusing. Final budget. So we have to close out Fiscal year 24. Okay. And then we have to, y'all are approving on the 30th, the final budget for FY25. So once that gets inputted into all of our systems, Liliana will have a better idea of revenue versus cost so that we she knows if we do okay. have any funding available for raises. Okay. Makes sense. Mr. Chairman, can I request that we uh, move forward with the agenda for the sake of time? We're, we're already 40 minutes in. Uh, we got a lot more to go. Well, I I think this is important, and you can request. However, everybody finish with their comments. Um, yes, thank you. you I'll be giving rise to your comments since we're forty minutes in. What about you, Steve? No, I heard you. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Then we go to item B: swimming pool. Uh, and I think that B and from talking to. Committee member Elkin, I think the 250 acre software uh, acre thing going to overlap some of the concepts that I had about swimming pool. I, I agree. Yeah. And so uh, 
I think we can combine B with C if that's mm -hmm. it. Because right mm -hmm. okay. I had a discussion yeah. with uh, Preston and uh, and I concur with him that, uh, and I would I like to give that get rise to that and let you talk about because it's basically what I was talking about. Okay, uh, so my whole thought there is we have the softball complex already completed, uh, has been for, I don't know, 15, 20 years, I, I would assume. Uh, but now we have the, the reuse, the retention pond and the reuse system butted up next, next to that property. Uh, so in my opinion, it would be very advantageous for us to look at putting in a uh, guy leader type of uh, complex where they have the softball fields and the soccer fields right next to each other uh, that would help with the infrastructure that uh, we would have to put in for water uh, you're not going to have to pipe it across town it can all be consumed right there uh, with that water we have plenty of water uh, that we could water those fields those additional fields i think we used to have the soccer complex out there already uh, but there's about 40 acres of perfectly flat land next to the floyd highway that i think would be a great use of that space uh, currently it's not being used for anything and, and I think that is city owned. Um, and so I think that'd be a great use of that. Uh, but then along with uh, the, the swimming pool, uh, I think Steve, you had said maybe three or four meetings ago that the quote that you'd got for the pool maintenance was like $700,000 to maintain that yes, uh, and get that up. back up. Okay. Uh, to me, it would be much cheaper to build a new pool if that's the cost that it takes to fix hours. Uh, and so you could, I think Clovis even has a sunken garden that they turned one of their old pools into maybe an option. I have no idea if we were to build a new one. Uh, but I think that space would be a great use of those two resources that we have to our, our citizens. Uh, but that was just an idea that I'd have. And that, I concur with that, uh, thought process. And if when in Clovis, they, even went so far as to uh, have water park kind of a concept. Splash pads. Splash pads. And they have also, the uh, city of Las Cruces also had all over the city uh, water, water, cricket where kids can go in, could find this go. So I think that we, on the swim pool, what I was thinking about was that there have been some statements that the swim pool is a historical. Uh, uh, building, but I, I don't see how it could be historical because of the fact it's already been renovated several times. And 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 in fact, the diving board that used to be there is no longer there. So that take take it out of the concept of being a historical building. And I don't know if we, if anyone ever submitted to the state that we had a historical building. If so, we probably should rescind that. Uh, that request because it's really not a historical building. Did we ever find out anything on that? I think the question was posed. The question has been posed. Staff continues to look. Joe, do you have any update on that? Um, the pool and no, it, I believe it was the pool um, that was built with the new era. Um, I brought that to the committee before um, project. And from what I understand, we aren't supposed to like tear those down um, because of how they were created and why. Um, I'm still looking into that. The bathhouse itself is the historical aspect of it. The pool, I believe, was 1974. Am I right? Um, so it is a little bit different than the bathhouse. Um, but that's that's as far as I've been able to really dig in i mean i've asked questions i've i've called and i've researched and I'm, i'll keep going so theoretically could we i don't know how this would look if the bathhouse is protected um can it be the entrance way to a splash park so i'm going to refer to the water department on the splash park part just i mean theoretically as far as the the historical portion of it. I mean, since 1972, oh. it wouldn't be under okay. WPA, right? So I believe that it would be okay. I mean, you know, whenever it comes to the historical okay. part just, of it all for the pool, then just um, an idea kicking around. And that's 
Well, and the main thought process around Steve and his staff getting updated quotes for the current pool is the governor did offer funding of, mm -hmm. to rehabilitate that. So the mayor is working on that promise um, as a possibility. Right. Just after the dumpsters, right? Trash can, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I respectfully, of course, I've got an objection to moving the pool. It has nothing to do with the history. A lot of our kids in this city walk to the pool. Mm -hmm. This is going to be far more accessible to them than walking to the pool. Okay. That's going to be a very difficult thing for a lot of kids to be able to bike or walk. That's a good point. So for that reason, I would say if you're going to build a new one, move over and build it right here, tear that one down. I'm not getting into the history. I don't want to get into the history of it. I'm just saying we need to keep it where it's at. Okay. Now, our current softball fields are right there at the Stoddard property. Is that correct? Soccer. 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 Well, Soccer. City League Sports are now run by the schools, and so that's why they're using utilizing one of their schools. Okay. Uh, and that, so... That is a shared property within the city, right? No, it's, it's, it's not shared. That is 100% no. school. That's school district. Sure. Okay. My only point being, as far as being able to water, there's a reuse line between that property and the school now. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be difficult to water off the reuse system right where it's at and not have the expense of building the field. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're in a budget situation, right? Mm -hmm. We're having difficulties finding money to take care of things now. I don't know about the extra expense of building the fields when we've got fields already there and we're being used and we have the water access right there with it. I agree with you. Uh, my, my thought on moving the pool was his quote of 700 that he gave us last time. There's no way it's more expensive to build a pool than it is to, well, I would think you could rehab a pool cheaper than you can build a new one, but he gave us 700,000. So I'm sitting there going, surely we can, Build it cheaper. So you just contractor here would be willing to probably donate some time and materials. And, and I, with, I agree. If, with you. if they would let us, I agree with you. I just think, based on his quote, that was the whole whole idea of should we know. build a new one. I hear what you're saying, but I would say move we'll build it right there and do mm -hmm. something else with mm -hmm. the piece. Than, yeah, than to move it because because of the location to our kids in the city. Yeah. Right. So my here's my my second thought to that. Uh, our kids are in in sports in Clovis because they take better care of their fields. And that's just a fact. Uh, guy leaders, every one of the softball complexes, their, so their grass is that thick. Mm -hmm. uh, it's safer for my kid to go play up there because he's not, every time he falls, he's not going to get stickers. Uh, so we, and I know that we're not the only family that goes to Clovis because of the uh, facilities that, that they have. Uh, so my thoughts were, if we can improve the softball complex, there's also a, a great soccer field right there uh, that would also, you could also bring in additional revenue to the city if you were able to add in a basketball court for Gus Macker. Uh, we're not doing a Gus Macker this year. We're kind of doing a, a, a variation of it, uh, but that brings in a lot of business to the, the city. You can also bring in Hike It, Spike It. You can bring in a lots, of, lots of different tournaments uh, that would benefit our city benefit hotels um and so that was my idea of what what can we utilize that uh land for uh and a a soccer complex there's not a whole lot of infrastructure you got and i don't even think the soccer complex in clovis has lights so all you have is water infrastructure uh and so really that would be the only maintenance is maintaining the pipes and mow it uh and, you, and you're done so the the extra expense there's not much Especially since all of the the infrastructure is already wrecked, right that that was the whole reason of utilizing that. And I understand what you're saying. I'm just trying to be sympathetic to a budget we're already having trouble with. If, if it's going to take a hundred dollars and you don't have and you don't have ten, you may need to do what you're going to do or what you have on a smaller scale and grow it and build it into that. Mm -hmm. And and we definitely need we need those laws to develop. Mm -hmm. I agree with you completely on that. Mm -hmm. We need to draw to the college to get people to come here and right. participate. Right. I agree with that. We're one of the biggest softball tournaments, men's tournaments that ever held anywhere in the state was right there to see this city park yep. for decades. Yep. A lot of money. Yeah.
So I do agree with you on that point. I'm just trying to be sympathetic to the budget we haven't been talking with already, but I end up new funds somewhere else if we just need maintenance where we're at. I'm not, gotta, saying, I'm not saying maintenance exactly is we're we're talking about a rebuild. Just do what we can to upgrade what we've got, maybe, and stay there. Right. Build build that tournament to the point you don't have enough room anymore. And maybe by that time we've got a budget to something. Mm -hmm. Well, and so my thoughts are, and, and you you'll know better than anybody, are all of our parks, do they all have the reuse system pumped to plumbed to them? Uh the majority of them do. Um, so Rotary does, yeah. City Park does. Um, I even think Comfort, Comfort, but that Comfort no. Comfort Park does. For degrees, yeah, yeah, yeah it's got it. Uh, Chase Park has got it. So Morrison, Morrison, Morrison does not. Morrison don't have it, and Senior don't have it. Yeah. So they can do. I? Senior don't have it. The only two that think it's Morrison and Senior. Yeah, yeah. Morrison and Senior. So it's to them, but are they being watered with the reuse system at all? So the only the only thing that's being watered with reuse would be cemetery softball complex and that old soccer field. That's it. That's, that's plumbed in. Okay, so the soccer field's already plumbed with the reuse system. Yes. The old soccer field. Uh, the soccer field that I used to play. But that butts field. up next to that 40 acres, I think. Okay. So you would still have to have the infrastructure in order to water those additional parks where I'm saying you're combining all of those into one that would then in turn decrease the maintenance for the mowing because you're not having to go mow one park, load it all up, then go drive across town to mow another park. You could be able to do it all at one location. And so it would help beautify one area versus them trying to be spread thin, take care of eight different parks. You could really maintain one and you could look at uh, doing something else with the other parks. parks. Those neighborhoods. I don't think we're providing a good service to them now. Do the soccer field, the one out there, Salvo Complex, have it? I thought it had uh, plumbing out there, a sprinkler system. I thought we could put that in about 10 years ago. It does have a sprinkler system. For the reuse? No, not reuse. I think, Steve, and, uh, we put in sprinkler heads out there, uh, soccer complex. Yeah, they, they got sprinklers. Yeah, and it's set up to the reuse system. Yeah. It was set up before the reuse system, what I'm saying. For, uh, well, but it, yeah, it's already done and yeah. plumbed into that retention pump. So they just have to turn it on. Uh, and do you have a timer? But that's not about that it. One. You don't have one? Not on, not on the soft, uh, soccer field. Not on the soccer field, just on the softball field. Okay. If going back to the pool, if y'all would like for staff to get a comparison quote of the cost to build a new pool, um, that way we can try and you know try to differentiate which direction we want to go as far as the cost versus rehabbing our current. Um, I just visited with Steve, and that's something that we can accommodate if you'd like. And that was that was the reason I asked it to be placed on the agenda is to ask staff to come up with a study as to when. Uh, how much and uh, what is more feasible? What's the most prudent way to uh, approach this? Because we got to address that before next year. That's mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I I feel like I drive down the street and my car truck is already banged up, but I think it's gonna get banged up more if we don't open up the swimming pool. I got one <laughs> question to ask on that, real quick. Steve, when was the last time we we done a major repair on the pool? And what did it run? Do you know? Three years ago, but I'm, I'm not sure what it costs. Okay. Because that's something that I want to look at. If we're going to keep uh, putting caulk in cracks and calling it seven, not talking about you, calling it $700,000, we, we're going to need a new pool. Well, they, the, they put in, mm -hmm. I don't know how much money, but that's a good report statement because the uh, the pipes that the, we went in with a lot of improvement on the water system uh, mm -hmm. and the and so it should be in it leaks, but it probably is leaking because it's not being used. So we we probably need to, they put in a lot of money in the, into the pipe system. I, I have a recommendation that we just forget about that WPA stuff. Uh, <laughs> it, the, the tennis courts, the sunken garden, softball field, the pool were all built with WPA funds. The tennis courts, the sunken garden are gone. The pool was remodeled, I believe, in 73. 
The only thing left is a bathhouse that would be under WPA. And I think where that impacts us is that if, or that there are potential grants um, available through the WPA factor of it, but you have to get a historical architect uh, at top dollar to draw up the plans for you. So it kind of can cancels out mm -hmm. part of the good. So, I mean, literally, if we wanted to, I think we could tear that thing down and start over. So we've already gone through one of our engineering companies that has an architect, a historical architect, and they have also mentioned that we would need to do um, the whole shipbo and historical aspect of everything. Um, I can go back again and find out, um, you know, we can discuss that and find out why or if there is a way around it. But the last time that we checked into all of this, they were saying that it would still have to be through all of that. If you want to use their if funds. If you want to use their funds. So that's the only reason why that is important. What if yeah. you've no, that was just through the engineering company. That wasn't through a funding. Yeah. But if we don't want to use their funds. Well, no, no, no. I'm saying, what if we've already, in the past for renovations, what if we've already used funds that support a WPA to, is that going to, I don't think we have to use it. Okay, okay. I don't know. That's what you look at. Well, the question is then, did we break the law when we remodeled it in 73? We is a strong word, sir. <laughs> well, did you, did you break the law when I, you I was, remodeled it? I, I was negative seven, so... <laughs> Now, two years old. Well, I mean, but you're the city manager. When the remodel happened in 73, if it was done under that structure back then, are we beholden to that? That's what I'm saying. Not whether we broke the law or not. If we followed the law and used money that was attached to WPA, would that hold us up now? Because we've already used some of them funds. Well, my sister used to work for the Department of Interior, and she came in to visit me. And we were driving around town, and, and she said, oh, wow, our department funded this project. And, and so some of that, some of those parks were funded by the Department of the Interior. Mm -hmm. and, I, and one in Pacific that I know that she went and she took a picture of it and took it back with her to Washington, D.C., is the softball complex over here. That was not a WPA. That was a Department of Interior yeah. and Senior Park was the second one. Because we went there, I said, well, you got, we got two or three of those. And so, but she no longer worked for the Department of Interior, but the Department of Interior was the funding source for those, those parts. I think the WPA is the Department of Interior. I we think did. that's, yeah, I and think that they're- where they come Yeah, from. because when I looked up the WPA and I ordered a book on- WPA projects in New Mexico. And I was surprised that it was affiliated with a Department of Interior or so it is. Yeah, it's a Department it's of Interior. It's a part of the interior process. Yes. Okay, thank you. Because I know that uh, she worked for the Department and uh, the Interior. She didn't mention WPA. She just said our department funded this. These our our courthouse was as well. Well, yeah. Uh, I know it has a lot of history on that one. Yeah. College, the uh, parts of the college work. Okay. Well, we I think we accomplished something to get the staff to come back with a study and a, a recommendation on what can be done with the swimming pool. The goal is to try to get a swimming pool over, uh, started so kids in this town will say, I'm going to go swimming next year. Well, and I, I don't want to be remiss, and I apologize for interrupting, but the DFA has offered to partner with us on this project as well. DFA? Yes. Nice. Uh, department, uh, oh. Not the Department of Finance Authority, the Dairy Farmers of America. Oh, nice. good. Nice. Um, good. Nice. So that is something that the mayor is working on in addition to the funding uh, from the governor uh, to get us where we do have that pool open and available. Over breakfast, I heard the mayor say... <laughs> I'm going to take a whole list of things. Uh, and right now, the only reason I haven't done it is because of the short set, the special section. But I'm sure the uh, Secretary Dago 
and the governor is going to be hearing from the city of Port Yeah, Steve. Question, just to be clear. What process or policy is there for contractors donating personnel and equipment to help with project? You have an answer to that? Um, okay, so we would go through the procurement process of finding the um, market value, um, fair market value for everything. And it, it's just, it's uh, within the New Mexico procurement statutes that we would just go through. But it is possible for them to donate time and, and equipment to help on a project? It is, it is possible for people to donate things to the city. Um, but where it gets gray is if it's already on city property. And that's where we'll have to do some more research to figure out because we can't as a city donate because, because of the anti-donation, but people can donate to us. And so we, historically, it just takes the council accepting that donation. But when it comes to certain projects or on city property, we'll have to get more specific because in my time, I not seen that happen so i don't think it's a bridge that we've crossed yet well just just for the purpose of specifics let's say we want to take the reuse line between the school and where the soccer fields are now you need a pipeline out of that street into their sprinkler system that they currently have mm -hmm. that would be one project i can think of that you could probably get donated yeah. equipment in time well and i think that would though then be a donation to the school uh, well, because that that's their park. They also own off the city street. Yeah, yeah, both. Yeah. Well, we okay. both. But then we cannot sell our reuse water to a private entity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no rate set up for that. And so, you, so that's a policy problem. It's a bunch of red tape because that's what we're trying to do. And a testing. permit problem. Yeah, our permitting is wrong to sell that. So at the country club, we put in lead applications to be able to utilize the reuse water. Well, we can't because we don't have it set up to where we can sell reuse water to a private entity. School, I assume, be included. Okay, let's go to another project over that again. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so let's say somebody volunteers say to refurbish the bathhouse. Let's say you need to tear that pool out and rebuild another one. You've uh -huh. got a company that's willing to come in there and donate the time and the equipment to tear that out before you have to start construction. That's all on city property. So we'd have to do some research. I don't sure. know that we've come across right. that in my time, sir. Put that out there because yeah. I know there's times in the past among contractors, it has been offered as well as hell. Yeah. That we would be willing to do things if we just had a process to be able to do it. Yeah. And I'll it, coordinate it, with it, Joe it, and it, Steve and we'll look into it. One one question, Oscar. Uh and y'all y'all said that City Park and Rotary are are have the reuse system to them. But the, the sprinkler system is not set up with reuse, correct? Correct. So you're still going to have to go through and dig new lines in order to put in reuse sprinkler heads. Correct. correct. So it would. So, so basically, we'd have to go through and cap off each end of where the pothole would be. Yeah. And we'd have to make sure that, that there's no other source for it going correct. to the bottom of water. And then we could we could uh, tie that in. And then you'd have to um, readjust and I think not readjust, but buy sprinkler heads yeah. uh, mm -hmm. for those. Uh, and I know it's pretty costly to do um, the ones for the complex, but I mean, yeah, because you have to have the purple heads and the, the expensive pipe, the purple pipe to make sure it's reclaimed, which is more expensive. So yeah. the heads are lower than $50 a piece. You're right. Okay. $50 a piece. $50 yeah. Piece. Was it $4,000 yeah. to do complex? We can just Those two meetings, two other topics. Yeah, yeah I've got yeah. another meeting out of that. Uh, if I might, I, I received an email the other day of a group that was uh, was willing to help with those type of projects through funding. I sent that to Steve. I don't know if you got in touch with the guy or talk to I can get older, I can get older. Okay. I've got that, I've got that email and it's a it's a group that um, said that they would work with um, pipelines, uh, it's just a water for 10 of sets and stuff. So. Very cool. Uh, I apologize for being so verbose, um, Amy. And 
and and and I think that that took up a lot of time in this uh, uh, meeting, but I thought it was important. So I'm sorry that we went over a long time to say something. Say something with a little nothing. No, we didn't say it's something with uh, just thoughts, but I think that it was needed. And so but because of that, uh, I would like to, uh, if it's all right, Ms. Uh, Mendoza and DeWitt, uh, uh, put y'all on the agenda for the next meeting. Mr. Robinson, if I may, could we please just at least cover the water warehouse so that we don't delay that project? Oh, it's a project? Yes, sir. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I apologize, but it would be time beneficial to go ahead and. There, is that all right, you, Ms. Mendoza? Yes. Okay, we'll do that then. And I, I do apologize. I've got another meeting to attend. I did watch the presentation yesterday, and I'm all for it. You heard his vote. <laughs> you heard his vote. So we took a just this is the house that um, the guys attend to each morning. They clock in here. Uh, this is this is just inside the the warehouse barn that's that's on Lime Street. Um, so it, it's never been renovated; hasn't been renovated since I've I've been a part of the city for twelve years. Um, and this this is due to just a bunch of rain uh, stuff that had happened. We got it fixed finally, and we had that hailstorm a couple of years ago, um, and it took out some of those skylights that we had inside the shop. And it took them a while to get the insurance adjusters to go do. All the roofs, well, they they came in and they finally got it squared away, so we don't have a leaking problem anymore. But it did do some damages. Um, so a big thing is you know safety for the guys. That I think you know it'll it'll boost morale all the way around. Um, but we I went and got a quote just to get a couple offices put in there, and um, you know just a kind of locker a locker room shower room type deal for the guys when they're muddy or you know full of sewage. So um, we were utilizing the, the locker room and stuff out of the wastewater treatment plant, but it's built specifically for the guys out of the plant. It's not, it's not large. So it was just uh, we were cluttering up their, their space out there. So um, we put together a quote, or Mario put together a quote of the Gary's construction. We're just trying to be, or I'm just trying to be transparent with you guys or with everybody, what we're wanting to do for water department and it is not a public building is it already all of these have been accomplished you say no 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 this, this is what needs to be done that, now this is this is something that i think steve was talking about a few minutes ago it, it, steve is this something that you think contractors would could if the process was established would help on this kind of project very possible so maybe we may have a way if well we, in but, Respectfully moving forward, I think Steve's idea is a great thing, but for the time sensitive nature of this project, I think it'd be beneficial if the enterprise fund did cover the renovation costs to get this building. So safe. you have the funds available. Uh, the enterprise funds covers everything that the water department waste right. and solid waste does, That's plus puts in a little over $1.2 million. The, this recommendation for the vote to the finance committee or the, or the city council or what? Uh, right now, this is just to build support and buy-in from the water advisory committee as well as the public works so that they can move forward with their project. Okay, what I'm saying, who approves them to move forward? That would be a procurement question. Um. So I... It's under a certain cost and um basically it would be up to um department and city manager to the, the, I mean so this is okay. Yes. This does not this is so this is nothing we don't to, we're not asking or needing any approval from any committee. Like Chris said, he wants to be transparent. Okay. I recommended that we build buy-in. That way there's no confusion as we move forward. And with me as interim, not full-fledged city manager, I think it's better that we build as much buy-in as we can uh, before we begin this project. But all it does require is the city manager's approval, oh, based well, on my then, understanding. Thank you for keeping us in the loop. I, I guess that's what you would say. I would ask this. Uh, I 100% support this. And uh, as quickly as possible, I, I would ask this. I see one person's name on here. 
<clears throat> I don't know them. Mario Aguirre Construction. Is this something that we have to, uh, the city has to put out on bids? Do we have to get multiple bids on this to to make, to be legal? Based on the amount, it's not, doesn't require multiple Leadership. quotes or uh, for us to go for RFP or request for proposal, correct? So the total and, yeah, amount of the project? Quotes. Okay, so we would need to get a couple more quotes. Yeah. Okay. But not bids. Because the total like, amount you don't have to go out to, right? Mm -hmm. So that would require uh, uh, RFP for. Not require an RFP, just multiple quotes. Multiple quotes. Oh, okay. A quote log. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> that I feel confident that Mr. Mendoza and his staff will work with other city staff to accommodate so that we can get this remodel and repairs up to where that specific area of our staff has what they need to do what we're asking them to do. Are you going to go ahead and approve it? Or are you going to take it to council? I will follow up with Mr. Mendoza and we'll look at it. The big holdup right now is the budget and getting that approved. So odds are it will probably go to council on the 30th just to build the further buy-in um, because there's not really a whole lot we can do until that final budget is uploaded and we can move forward. So we might as well take advantage of the extra time and build buy-in. So you're not, you're not, you're taking a risk that you might not get approved by the council though. Well, it's more of a notification and getting support. It's not an action. It's not an action item. That's that's the word I was trying to get you yes, to sir. say. It's not no. an action item. Correct. Jim. Yes. Would you entertain a motion? It, it, is it Sir Jordan? Yeah. No. <laughs> I would like to make a motion that we pledge our support as this committee to this okay. project to move it forward. Very good motion. Thank I'll you. second that. We have a second. I'll heard the motion to move this broad. I, uh, Tom I, uh, I did I did have something that I wanted to put in. You have a motion? Yes. No, it was just it was just a question. A, 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 a question to the motion. Okay, go ahead. No, it's not a question to the motion. Okay, then the comment is out of order. Okay. <laughs> did we go on and vote I mean, all in favor of the motion. Aye. 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 Okay, motion passed. Now you can have your comment. Okay. Well, I'd, I'd already eyed. So <laughs> anyways, so yesterday, whenever I heard this, I was I was pretty dubious on a bunch of things to include the bids and everything. And I spoke with Chris yesterday. He reassured me in all my questions. Um, I did have an additional question. Do you estimate any upgrades to the facility to make it workable and any additional costs like IT and stuff like that? Is there any other, anybody else got to come in and, and do their thing uh, to bring you in computers? Well, I mean, we, we have a schedule that Christine puts us on for monitors, but I mean, other than... So I guess what I'm asking is uh, the Aguirre quote covered all the construction, but I didn't see anything for bringing in uh, internet or anything like that. What kind they, of additional funds? They don't there right now because uh -huh. we have no cabling into that office. It, we would have to have Yucca come in and recable and put in a switch. It, it's more. Do you think we should look at that? Because I think that this should probably, when we get a new public works director, this should probably be a, a working office for for Mr. Mendoza to have where we're not just trying to work on some faded uh internet signal i think we should look at uh also adding that in there somewhere well and i do believe that that's part of his long-term plan okay. this is just the first step okay yeah and that was just a question that i hadn't asked him yesterday other than that like i said i was a little dubious but uh he answered all my questions and uh um yeah i'm definitely a yay. okay okay in addition to the cdl we will pull off chief is that okay to the next week meeting. Yes, sir. Okay. And that be an additional discussion. Any additional discussion? No, sir. Okay. Chair sure, retain a motion. Next meeting on the 30th, correct, uh, sir? Huh? No, August 6th. Other bit? August 6th. August 6th. Is it August 6th? Yes, to get back in sync with the council. Out of sync. Out of sync. Yeah. Out of sync. <laughs> out of sync with council. So the next meeting is not July 30th, it's August 6th. August 6th. I'll send a calendar item. Thank you, Christine. 
and I will remember that it's in a memorial building. Oscar? Yes. When you start driving again, do we need to shift the time for you? Because school starts back up August 8th. That will be something you need to think about the next meeting after that. So we, we get off the bus at we get off at eight. We we off the bus. Okay, that. I just wanted to ask. Yeah, that's a good point. But they, they, we have to do more bus inspection, so I'll definitely be off the bus. Okay. You know they put another thirty minutes on us. Meeting adjourned. Yeah, we have a motion to adjourn. Thank you, guys.